Hello YouTube, Tim here. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that Turkish bow that I made, the one with no deflex in the limbs. The shape of it was great, it was going very well, everything seemed to be spot on track, and then kapow! It's the one that so dramatically exploded on camera. Well, it's about that failure that I wanted to talk. Specifically, I believe in a little bit of analysis, I've uncovered exactly what happened. My original belief was that it was simply a failure of the grain. I keep the grain as, since I cut these from boards and not pieces of wood that are bent, obviously there's going to be increasing amounts of runoff. Since I keep the grain straight for the area where there's the most stress, and then there will be runoff further down in the kasan, the bash, the kasan. So, the trouble is, uh, since it runs off, I figured once it was flexed, it shattered there, and then it leveraged its way out of the PVC limb, shattering it. And then I picked up an older bow that I had, which had failed very similarly. It was a uh, another Turkish-style bow that I made, but with PVC acias. So, somewhat different situation, but the failure was very similar. And I looked at that one, and I, I flexed it, and the surviving limb made a little cracking noise. And where it made that cracking noise was right here. You see, by creating this elegant shape to it, I had also unintentionally weakened the PVC. I had created a point of failure, a nice sharp hinge there, where since there there is that distance and it's not being held together by inter intervening PVC, when it hinges back, not only does it separate from the top, the top and the bottom flex. Let me see if I can show you a little bit. You see how, how even the glue pulls away a little bit? It's not fully glued in. Given enough flex here in this region, this is going to fail the exact same way, I believe. Maybe not, but, and you know, it's possible the failure point will be beyond normal draw. But in the case of this, it was clearly not. So my belief is now that my aggressive cut here, an attempt to make it attractive and gracile, in fact led to, combined with uh, possibly inadequate amounts of glue here near the base. I had plenty up here near the end, but these sections, the top and the bottom, weren't glued quite as heavily as I usually do. Combine that with the wood grain, all of these factors, but principally, I think, the main factor was the cut. So, that's my post-mortem analysis. I believe this kind of a bow then stands a little bit of extra testing now. I can make another one like it, this time leaving the ends completely intact, and I believe it will draw. I believe it will draw to 28 inches. Look at the amount of set here. That's the important part. You can see how, how much or little strain the bow is under. Because there are two types of deformation. There's elastic deformation and there's plastic deformation. Elastic is recoverable. Plastic is non-recoverable, or what we call set in archery. So, there's, since this started off dead straight, you can tell there's a very slight backwards bowing, a very slight set to it. And almost all of that's going to be here in the handle, where it was kept round. I didn't flatten it, which would have increased the rigidity, and that would have forced the limbs to do more work. That might have been a good idea, but I, in this case, wanted the handle to bend a little bit more to relax the limbs, since this is a very short bow. So it would work throughout the entire bow. Not completely traditional, but it was my plan to make a bow that had as much recurve as possible and, and still could be shootable and functional. So, if, for example, the bow were stressed substantially, it would take a set. It didn't. So at least given the current situation, given the way things are currently arranged, I don't think this was any danger of failure along the inner limb. The mid limbs aren't going to fail. They're under less strain and they're much thinner, so they'll bend much, much more. It's possible you could get a fold here. 
it's also possible or apparently more likely that the ends will fail. So let me go ahead and try this again and we'll see if we can create a new bow of similar length, similar stress, see what it draws and see if we can get even better performance out of it. As we can see with bows such as Nick's adult recurve bow made out of Schedule 80, it does take a substantial set. Most of that set, at least in my experience, has been elastic. And a lot of that comes back after it rests after shooting. Nevertheless, there's still a substantial set while you're using the bow. So it still performs spectacularly, casting arrows at in the 160s and 170 feet per second range. That's spectacular. So we shouldn't be afraid of a little set, just as we shouldn't be afraid of a little deflex. After all, reflex, deflex, longbows are extremely respected. So it's not so much the, the profile as the combination of the profile, the materials, all of these factors, and the amount of strain it's put under. Let's see if we can't put this under a little bit more strain and go and make a really snazzy looking bow. Hopefully without uh, it exploding in our hands. Thank you for watching YouTube.